Hello everyone, my name is Paulo Alves and on this video we are going to start developing some unit tests for our real app using React Native. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow this development and let's go to the code. First we have to install the packages that are necessary for us to test the code of our app. These tests are important for any real app that you want to develop because besides showing that our code doesn't fail, they automate this repetitive part of verifying if the things are working the way they should work. To do this, we go to the command line and the package that we should install is the testing library of React Native. So let's inform npm to install in the develop mode the library that we are going to use to test our code. This library is called testing library slash React Native. Besides that, I have to come to the package.json file and inform to Jest, which is the library that is going to do those tests, one property that informs Jest how to transcribe the files that are necessary for those tests. I'm using this transform ignore patterns to transcribe the node modules and the React Native, everything that's inside of it. The first screen that we are going to test is the login screen. So let's start coming to the app slash screen slash login. And here I'm going to create a new folder called double underline tests double underline. And here I'm going to create a new file called login.screen.tests.js. This scribe is going to contain all the tests of our login screen. So I start by describing that this test is going to test the login screen. Every test starts with an it function. So the first thing that we are going to test is that it should go to the home page on login. Let's start as usual. Our test with a code that clearly is going to fail. So we are sure that this test is actually being executed. So I'm going to expect that false is equal to true. Now let's execute those tests with a command that informs npm to execute the tests. I'm going to inform also that those tests should run again every time I change the code. All right, everything is ready. You can see that these tests are failing and that's obvious because I put it to fail. And we can start actually testing our code. The first thing that I need to do is to import the React from React. Now I come to the test and I'm going to create a constant called page and I'm going to inform that this constant is going to receive a rendering of our login screen. This render function is available in the testing library that we just installed, which it does is exactly to render the page. I mean, it creates the screen. All right, now that we have access to our page, we can see what's inside of this render function. This render function gives us a lot of functions that we can use to access the elements of our page. For example, if I want to access an element by its test ID, I can call the function get by test ID. If that element doesn't exist, I'm going to have an error on my test. If by any chance I want to check if an element exists, but I don't want it to throw an error if it doesn't, I can call the function query all by test ID. This function returns an array with all the elements that have that test ID. But to remain with the question, what is this test ID that I'm talking about? Well, let's go step by step. First, I'm going to create a constant called login button and I'm going to initialize this constant with the login button that's declared on our screen, which is this login button here. I'm going to remove the instruction here below because it doesn't do much and let's see what happens with our tests. Our test is failing because this button still doesn't exist. Well, actually it exists, but I didn't inform that that button has a test ID equal to login button. So let's go to our login screen to do that. I will find that login button and I'll inform that its test ID is equal to login button. Now save the code and we'll see that our code will pass. That happens because now this function get by test ID, it's finding the login button. So what this test is doing until now is to verify if that login button is on the screen. Now let's test that when we click on the login button, the user should be redirected to the home page. How do we do that? We can use the fire event object of our testing library, and this object has the function press, which will press that login button. So now let's go to our login screen and take a look on how we are making this transition to the home screen from the login screen. On the pressing of the login button, I'm executing this function called login, and what it does is on the navigation objects that came to the screen as a parameter, I'm calling the navigate function. 
and on this navigate function, I'm passing the home route. I mean, what I have to test on my test to know if I'm going from the login screen to the home screen, when I click on that button, is to verify if this navigation function is being called. Let's actually do this so we better understand how it works. I'm going to create on my test a constant called navigation. And this constant is an object that has the function navigate. What happens now is that I can pass as parameter this object that I just created to our login page. And after that, I can expect that on the navigation object, the navigate function was called with the string home as parameter. Oops, it should be a capital H. But this expect function, it doesn't receive a function as a parameter. See that we are sending the navigate function to it. What it receives as a parameter is a spy. So I'm going to spy on the navigation object, the function navigate. I mean, I'm informing here on my test that it has to keep an eye on the navigate function that belongs to the navigation object. Then I send this navigation object to our login screen. I'll get that login button by test ID. I'll press that button and I'll expect that the navigate function has been called with the string home. When I save it, we are going to see that our test will pass. Now let's see how important these tests are imagining one simple situation. Some developer came to the login screen and instead of calling the login function on the press of the login button, the developer coded it to call the register function. What's going to happen is when we run our tests, we are going to know that there is an error in our code because of a failing test. These tests, when they are well done, they give us the safety of knowing that when we change something, our code doesn't break. So let's undo this, make our test pass, and go back to our tests. Our next test is that it should go to the register screen after clicking on the register button. I'm not going to copy and paste the previous code, so let's just do it by step by step to understand it better. I'm going to create a constant called page, and this constant will have the rendering of our login screen. And now I'm going to create another function called register button, and from our page, I'll get by the test ID this register button. The next thing I want to do is to fire an event of the type pressing on our register button. And now I can expect that the navigation object with the function navigate has been called with the parameter register. This navigation object doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. It's a constant called navigation, which is an object with the function navigate. Now I'm going to spy on that function navigate of our navigation object, so I can know what it's doing on our test. And now I'm going to pass this navigation as the parameter of our login screen. Oops, I put register screen and should be login screen. After saving it, we are going to see that our test is failing exactly because this register button is not being found on our screen. And it's not being found because we didn't declare the test ID of our button. So let's go to the login screen and let's declare that the test ID of our register button is register button. After saving this, we are going to see that our test now passes. So I think these are the only tests necessary for our login screen for now. So let's test the home screen, which has some integration with the Google Maps. This home screen has three possible states. The first state being when the user just entered the page. The second state being when the user filled the origin and destination of the delivery, and now the user has to confirm that delivery. And the third state when the user is waiting for someone to start that delivery. So let's go to our home folder and let's create a test folder inside of that home folder. Inside of that folder, I'm going to create a file called home.screen.test.js. And now I'm going to describe that this is how our tests file for the home screen. And I'm going to create our first test that it should show the map without the confirmation and searching parts. Before all of that, I have to import the React library. And now, yeah, we can start our test. As usual, I'm going to start expecting that false is equal to true. After saving it, obviously this test is going to fail. 
Now I'm gonna create a constant code page which will receive the rendering of our register, I mean our home screen. So I'm gonna remove this test that's not doing much and I'm gonna get by ID our map. After saving it, we are gonna still have an error because this test ID with map view doesn't exist. So let's go to our home screen and I'm gonna inform that the ID, the test ID of the map view is equal to map view. After saving it, now our test passed because the test ID exists. What I need to check now is that the confirm delivery part doesn't exist and the search in delivery part doesn't exist. So let's go back to our test and we have to remember that this get by test ID function returns an error in case the element doesn't exist on the screen. So I can't use that function. What I have to do is to expect that on that page, when I query by all test IDs that are equal to confirm delivery card, the amount of these elements that will be returned by this function is going to be equal to zeros. Now I'll do the same thing for our other component, which is the search delivery component. So instead of confirm, I'll put search here. After saving it, we are going to see that these tests pass, even though we didn't inform these test IDs on our home screen. As I'm testing, if none of these elements exist, this test will pass because that's what happens. They don't exist on the home screen. So this instruction will be equal to zero, but all right, our test passed, so let's go to our next test. And for sure in the near future for our next tests, we are gonna have to inform those tests ID. So our next test, it should show a map with the confirm and without the search part. What I'm going to do is just to copy this code and paste in our new test. And I'm just gonna simply verify if the confirmed delivery card exists. After saving it, we are gonna see that this test will fail and now we can try to make it pass. For it to pass, we have at least for now to identify that test ID on our home screen. So our home screen uses this component called confirm delivery card. So let's go inside of this component and on this top part, this card, I'm just going to inform the test ID equal to confirm delivery card. I'll save it and even though we did this, our test is going to still fail. This happens because of this part of the screen only shows up when the state of our screen is equal to 2. But notice that the state of our screen is always equal to 1. As the state is always equal to 1, that part of the screen is never going to show up. What we can do now to solve this problem is to pass this state as a parameter of our screen inside of this home screen props. So I'm gonna add this state attribute to our home screen props. And what I can do now is to get that state value from the properties of our screen. If the state comes as a parameter, I'll get it. If not, it will be equal to one. After saving it, we are still gonna have an error, but I can come back to our home screen and inform that the state of this page for this test is equal to two. As I'm passing the state equal to two, what's gonna happen is that this part of the screen is gonna show up. And because of this, our test will pass. So let's go to the next test that I wanna execute on this screen. I wanna test that it should show the map without the confirm and with the search part. Again, I'm going to copy this part here just to make our job easier. And now I don't want the confirm delivery card to show up, but I want the search delivery card to show up. After saving it, we're going to have an error. And this firstly happens because I didn't declare this search delivery card test ID. So let's go back to our home screen. And this is the component that has to have that test ID. So let's go inside of it and declare on the parent component that its test ID is equal to search delivery card. After saving it, what's going to happen is that we still have an error and we still have an error because this search delivery component only shows up when the state is equal to three. But on our test, I'm passing the state equal to two. So to make this test pass, I have to put here three instead of two. After saving it, we are going to see that our test will pass. And it's really good to make it clear that this is not test driven development. In TDG, we make the test before making the code. What I did here was exactly the opposite. I already had the code and then I made the tests. But all right, we are in the beginning of our app. We are incrementing the functionality step by step. 
and what I intend to do on the next videos is for sure to use TDD. Of course, we still have a lot of stuff to test here in this initial state of the project because we have a lot of page transitions, but I tested only from login screen going to the home screen and from login screen going to the register screen. But I also need to test that registry screen going to the home screen. But I'm not gonna do these tests on this video because otherwise this video would be long and repetitive. In case you wanna take a look on these tests, you can go to the link that's available here at the description of this video and then you're gonna be redirected to our public GitHub that has all the code of these videos that I'm making. And starting from now, we are going to develop everything using TDD, meaning we are going to do the tests before the code. And on the next video, we are going to start the full development of each part of our application, starting by the login page. And by full development, I mean we are going to focus only on the login screen, starting with the form validation, and then we are going to create the state management. We are going to create some services that are going to call the back end. Then we are going to move to the back end with some REST API that we are going to develop for that login screen. And then this back end, we are going to check on the database if we have some user with that email and password, and we're going to retrieve the user and so on. After we finish the whole development of the login screen, we are going to move to the registry screen, and then we are going to do the same thing for the registry screen the whole development and then the home page and so on. So subscribe to the channel in case you are still not subscribed, but you want to follow the development of this real app using React Native. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, share this video with your friends and see you on the next video.